Yo, what's good everybody? My name is Alchemy and today you are looking at Drambo. Drambo is this crazy semi-modular synthesizer that is both compatible with iPhone and iPad. Unfortunately, there's no Android support, but basically it's like Bitwig and or Faceplant pocket version. Now it doesn't have like, you know, the crazy full robust features, but it does have enough to where like you could almost do anything on this. It's absolutely insane. So yeah, if this is your first time in the channel, we usually cover things neurobase related and I'm really kind of just elated to share this with you because I mean, how cool is it to be able to make neurobase stuff on the phone? So I can kind of just pull up a couple of different settings before we get started because this is going to be a long video about what to expect. But if we go to an instrument rack here and we go to presets, I've got a few little things here that uh, sound pretty interesting. So we've got something kind of like this for one. Let me move this down a bit. Pretty cool. Uh, we've also got another one here. Uh, that's first party that I did last night, which this one is a little bit more tame, but even still, it's pretty cool. And if we were to add something kind of like an OTT to this, maybe Woot, uh, which is a third party plugin, but even still, uh, it's okay. Uh, then we can kind of get into having some interesting uh, high end as if we were doing this in Ableton or so. I'm going to come back off of this for a sec. Change the amount. Start working on that makeup. Pretty crazy, right? Like the fact that I can do this on the phone just again blows my mind. So anyways, let's go ahead and start this from scratch and we will get in and start having some fun. Now, uh, just a forewarning, I'm going to be using only first party effects. None of my wavetables, even though I can put wavetables in here. And uh, that way it's just something that you can follow along with if you want. And also if you're on the computer, there's a standalone application as well. Um, what was I going to say before this? Yeah, this is going to be a long video, so stick around <laughs> or just scroll to the end of the video to see what this sounds like. But I will be taking you through step by step of how to make sounds like this. Um, yeah, here we go. So um, the thing with Drambo and the thing with modular synthesis in general is that you really have to tell it what to do through almost every single step of the way. And so the processing chain works from left to right that goes into an output. So even from here, you can hear that there's this huge 808 device going on right now. So we need to find an ADSR in order to kind of control that in this way. Uh, before I do that, I'm actually going to start over because it's just going to make this easier, but I'm actually going to pull up an instrument rack. You just hit the plus button and then go to generator instrument rack. And that way I can kind of control this as a whole. So let me retrace my steps real quick and we'll kind of get caught up on where we're supposed to be. Great. Uh, so you can adjust the attack and sustain and all that other stuff kind of in the same way as you would in ADSR. But now whenever you play a note, it should play as it normally would with a regular synthesizer. Maybe just add a touch release to this. There we go. Now, what's really cool about the wavetable is that while there is no wavetable editor, you can import wavetables if you want to. There's some factory ones that we're going to use here. So maybe we'll just kind of mess around a bit and see if we can find one that's kind of, I don't know, in the same space of what we're looking for. That looks good to me. Maybe we'll try this one and see what that sounds like. And like, can we just take a note of like how good this sounds? It's pretty amazing, like just the technology that we have available today. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to hit the unison knob and I'm gonna change this to two. And then we need to open up this little edit tab right here and turn the stereo off. From here, I'm gonna mess with the detune settings to try to get a reese out of this. And we'll just mess around until we find something we like. Okay, 
So you can also set more voices if you want to. But I find that two voices is usually good for what we're looking for. So uh, unless if you have a really clean sound, then the phasing is not gonna be as prominent as it normally would, but that's okay. There we go, now you can actually hear it a little better. So there's this really cool thing with this, and by default, Drambo is 20 bucks, but if you pay for the expansion, then you get the wavetable, but you also get the waveform effects, which are really cool. So within this, you've got the wave effect, wave filter, wave motion, wave vocoder, and we're gonna kind of just use the uh, first and third. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set this here, and what's really neat about this is that this will actually move this motion uh, or it will make the wavetable move in a way that kind of uh, is only a sine wave, unfortunately, but still sounds really cool. So check this out. So I'm not really even sure what it's doing, but you can see here that now the wavetable is kind of like morphing into itself. And it almost seems like there's this asymmetric movement between the left and right side of the wavetable, right? Because it's not just going up and down, it's actually kind of like, yeah, it, I don't know, it looks like it's actually waving or some sort, which is really cool. So by taking a listen to this, uh, you'll see how it's gonna give a, a little bit more movement. <laughs> Super cool. Now what's even cooler about this is when it comes into modulation, anything that has this little gray arrow on any of these, uh, you can modulate with, well, just about anything. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the speed here to the pitch just by taking the little note over on the left, which is this little green thing over where on this side. And if you take a look, it will say key. So we just turn the key up as if we were using Bitwig or phase plan of the sort. And now we've got modulation to the speed, which is super cool. So what that means is if I play a higher note, it's going to oscillate faster. Nice. Super cool, man. I mean, just the fact that, like, again, I'm just mind blown about this, about what I can, what I'm doing right now. So. Uh, even still, let's go ahead and give it just a little bit of saturation. So we're going to go here to the wave effect and go saturate and then just barely adjust the amount to where we've got a little bit fatter of a sound. Now, if we want this to glide, then what we'll do is we'll add that. So we just go to the library and we'll type in glide. And we want to move this over to the left, kind of like so, right next to the instrument. And then on this, we're just going to move this to about 300-ish milliseconds. And this is just a sweet spot for me, so it doesn't really matter where you want to do it. But now... Nice. Now we've got some really cool stuff that's kind of moving around. And uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll start these both in the same phase to see if I can make that uh, pit against each other just a bit better. Sweet. So now we get into the really cool stuff, which is the frequency splitter here. So we're going to grab a processor, uh, sorry, a mixer rack and go to the layers crossover. And if you look right here, it's actually a three band split, which means that we can process this like a neuro, like a normal neuro base, which is absolutely crazy. Now, unfortunately you can't modulate the high and low frequency or the volume of these or the gain of these, but even still there's other ways around it. You could just use like an amp tool or something, I suppose. Maybe we can see if we can just do that if we really wanted to. So we can go to amp and then move that here. And then, yeah, you can see that you can modulate this via something like that. So that's always a possibility if you want to do it. And that's what's cool about Drambo is that usually there's a bunch of different workarounds to this. 
So keep that in mind. Now let me see if I can get rid of this. I don't want it anymore. <laughs> um, just turn it off. Get rid of it. Oh, it says select output, that's why. Okay, so yeah, the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to go stereo to mono. And what this is gonna do is just mono the bass. And then we can add just a touch of shaper to this which is our distortion unit. Now what's cool is you actually have a wave shaper here, which is the graphic shaper. I'll just show you that quickly. So if you wanted to make your own thing, then you could. So say you wanted to make a typical curve, then you can add that. Let's see what that sounds like. Awesome. That actually worked out pretty well. Now the magic is in the middle, so we're gonna go ahead and process this with some other things. Uh, let's say we'll add like a chorus or something. And the next thing that we'll do is add an LFO. And what's cool about these LFOs is there is no technically like smooth random, but there is a sample and hold ramp, which is the next best thing. But kind of like when we talk about giving ourselves some kind of, uh, I guess, stuff to move with, we can automate the mix via stereo here. So we just hit this button, then we tell it to go to the little squiggly line at the bottom of LFO. And now we can move this up. And this is going to mix in this chorus whenever we play. Uh, what we can also do if we wanted to kind of keep everything, uh, I don't know, I guess cohesive is we can also change the pitch of this to modulate the LFO frequency. So now, same thing, I pull this up. I don't know what's going on here. There, now I do. So I'm gonna move this low thing now and turn the mid up and we can focus just on this. What's really cool is you can already hear it starting to kind of morph, which is pretty neat. So what we can do now is grab a couple of filters. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is just grab this one here. And there's a few different options that go from low pass to notch. You probably can guess what I'm going for. Um, there, I do have a parametric EQ that's third party and there's actually one that's available for free, but I would say, uh, I'm just gonna show you how to do it without it first, just because well, I don't want you to have to go and look elsewhere for something that you probably already just bought. So we'll work with this and then maybe in a future video or something, I'll show you all the third party effects and stuff of making a super crazy beefy one. But in any case, what we can also do here is we are going to set the cutoff to the same LFO, but we're gonna turn it down. So we'll move this up around say like 800 or so, and then maybe not the entirety of the frequency range. But now from a thousand hertz all the way down to, I don't know, some number. And that's the unfortunate thing about this is we're going to have to use our ears, but it's going to be moving around those low mids. So we go here and move out of that. Let's see what that sounds like. And I don't know what happened here, but I had a cool little thing with uh, my scale. So I'm going to go back to the Phrygian and then I'm also going to go to the D sharp. And go, instead of adaptive, I'm gonna go to size, small, medium, big, small. I don't really know how I got that cool little layout, but anyways, that's fine. It'll work. Awesome, and that's just the mid signal. So let's go ahead and keep going. Now what we can do is add a band pass. And, oh, we need a filter, sorry. I do that all the time on Bitwig as well, but we're gonna add another filter here that will be a band pass. And we're gonna kind of just adjust the resonance here, but I'm gonna kind of swipe this over to the left. You see where that green thing is kind of pulling up. So now we'll add a second LFO here and we can apply this to this guy. So we go here, actually, let me move this over here first. So that way for continuity's sake, it will just be easier for me to catch up with. So 
now we will move this into LFO2. And I like that it's color coordinated, so it will tell me what LFO is going where, which I guess it doesn't really matter now. But playing this and then maybe adjusting the speed here, we'll hopefully get some movement over on the midband. And that's really what we're looking for, is just to make this part right here specifically kind of move around and do some cool stuff. All right, so it's definitely doing things now. So we need to kind of just move that. Yeah, you can already hear how it's creating vowels now. And the band, or the band pass with the notch is usually one of the best combinations that you can use when it comes to the middle. Uh, typically, again, I would use a parametric EQ, but because we don't have that luxury, at least not for this video, I think that we're going to do just fine without it. Uh, so we lost a lot of stuff here, and we need to bring it back. So we're going to use some small amounts of distortion. And instead of just cranking like a single distortion on here, I'm going to listen to this and see what happens. And then if it's uh, starting to sound good, I might add another instance of distortion, but you don't want to overdo it. So it's better to use smaller amounts of multiple distortions than it is to use just a single amount. Uh, thanks, Cage. That was a tip that he gave me a while ago. And uh, let's take a listen to what this sounds like now. Yeah, that's starting to sound pretty good. So let's see if uh, we can double that. And I guess what I'll do is I'll highlight the title of this and go copy and move this over. And then down here, I'll hit paste. And let's see what that does now. Nice, that's starting to sound really good. Let's set this to clip and see what that does. All right, it's a little much. We'll back off of this and change the saturation curves to some other amounts. Let's add this stereo back in and see if we can get that going. And that's the thing is like, I know that if you've seen my faceplant videos and stuff, like you'll see like I'm controlling just everything with the stereo and all that other stuff. That's a really finicky thing. And my fingers are too fat, unfortunately, but <laughs> ah, come on. Uh, you know what? It's fine. I'll just add a different effect, maybe like a phaser or something because I can't reach for it. Um, but with that being said, we'll add a phaser to this now. And um, Drambo, if the if you guys are listening, the devs are listening, I would love for the ability to kind of just be able to modulate more parameters within these. So for example, you can't mess with the mix of the phaser, which is kind of lame, uh, but that's okay because we can work with it. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, grab LFO one and start to modulate the frequency here. So we'll just kind of scroll over here and hit the blue and then kind of move the frequency over in this area and kind of adjust the feedback. And um, what I'm gonna do is turn the mix up by quite a bit, so like 50%, but I'm gonna turn the mod speed down almost all the way. So let's see what that sounds like, if anything. Nice. So now let's go ahead and return the low signal back up. Man, that sounds really good already. Uh, we don't even have the high end. But one thing that I will say that is free, uh, that could be cool to use, and I'll just, I'll put this on here and then I'll take it off, but there's this baby audio magic chorus that's absolutely uh, free. And I just did a review on that stuff. But if we went to audio unit processor and we go and scroll down to this thing here, the magic switch is what it is. This is the chorus from baby audios uh, VHS. And when you turn this on in the middle button, it's freaking sick. So check this out. <laughs> it just sounds so good. So I know that I said I was going to do first party effects, but I just wanted you to be aware that this one is free and definitely worth it. Um, actually, it might even be worth showing you something else as well. So if you have a third party effect pulled up and you hit the map button that's over to the right, now it's blinking as you can see, and you touch a parameter, guess what? you can modulate third-party effects. So if I go here and I start moving this, 
look, this is here now. So I can use that same LFO, or any of these LFOs rather, over this way to modulate the mix of this, which is super sick, right? Like, again, this is 100% almost identical to like a, a standard workflow that you would do within Ableton or within Bitwig with the uh, horizontal rack. It is a little bit inconvenient because it's kind of like, it's a lot to keep up with. But at the same time, like you could do it. And if you're comfortable with working with an Ableton or Bitwig respectively, then it won't be that big of a deal. But yeah. So yeah, I just wanted to show you that, but we're gonna stick to the first party effect still. I think that it's fine. Great, let's go ahead and introduce the high band now. And I'm gonna back off of these guys here. And we are just going to focus on the high effects now, which should be relatively empty. But what's really cool about this, and uh, when this is done, I'm actually gonna save this crossover preset so that way I can use it in other bases whenever I'm done with it, which will be super sick. So um, let's go ahead and find a low pass filter now. So I'll just grab this and we'll go filter. And maybe we can use an analog filter because there's a little bit of tone shaping on here that's kind of cool. So if we listen to this. You can see that we can boost the high end just a little bit. And we don't need it a whole lot, but having just a little bit extra is pretty nice. But what we can do is we can grab the cutoff here and you know turn that all the way up and then do the same thing where we grab our LFO and move it over to the side. Let's go ahead and just kind of be thorough and set this to the pitch. And what we're gonna do now is turn the key up and turn the frequency a little up as well with the sample and hold ramp so that way everything is kind of moving in a smooth way. Now that we have this though, we can grab the cutoff here and we can adjust this to the LFO, turn that down. And now within this, I'm gonna set this to be kind of fast because I want it to be kind of morphing. Uh, we can adjust kind of all of the movement within this. Slowly backing off the tone just a bit now we can introduce all the other sounds and let's take a listen to how this is going. That's awesome. I have to sneeze. Uh, excuse me. So, uh, with this, one thing that we can add to make it a little bit more interesting, and I'm not sure if I want to put this on the high end or on the mid band, but let's go ahead and grab a feedback delay network, um, just an FDN. There's also a reverb version of this, which is pretty sick, but we can move this over before the analog filter and kind of just modulate the mix with this as well. So I will do the same thing where I hit copy, move this over there until the green thing comes up. It's a little finicky, but that's okay. And same thing with this guy, set that up. So everything is pretty much the exact same. And now what I'm going to do is just modulate the mix with LFO three, I believe. Yeah, sorry, I was just double checking to make sure that the green was the other one that I was doing. So these are gonna move independently of each other. But now within this, we'll have a little bit of space here that we can work with in order to create just a little bit of uh, opening and closing sounding or like suction noises and stuff with this reverb, which is pretty cool. Let me turn down the pre and then we can kind of crank the high dampening just a little bit. Cause again, we only want to focus on the high frequencies anyways and the cutoff is around 2K. So it's going to make quite a bit of a difference. But now that we have that, let's see if that makes any difference to our sound. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool so far, man. I again, I can't believe that I'm doing this on my phone. So, I think that this crossover thing is okay. 
let's go ahead and call this neuro rack uh, neuro rack tutorial and that way we're doing ourselves a favor and we're going to be able to uh, hopefully save this or something at some point um, and even if not copy uh, even if not we can still kind of cut this or pull this preset up and cut it and then paste it in another thing anyways but I thought that I could save this as a preset perhaps not but I have a better idea that we can use in order to be able to do this and I think that's a good time to talk about that now so um, I'm just going to move off of this because this is an effect it's not really doing a whole lot so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to collapse it so there should be a thing on here that says fold I believe Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. Um, there is not. So what I'm going to do is I am going to highlight this. I'm gonna go cut, and then I'm gonna go into a processor rack, kind of like so, and move that right here. I'm gonna hit plus and go paste. And now this is where it needs to be. So from here, I'm gonna rename this to the neuro rack tutorial. And now I can save this as a preset, go to user. I've got a little first generator thing of making like cool generators or whatever, but now I just hit save, neuro rack tutorial, hit return. There we go. So now we can use that for later. So if you're wanting to save these as presets, the best thing you can do is to group this in the way that I showed you by making a rack. And then that way you can save these as presets, which is super dope. Um, unfortunately, I lost a couple of things, which is not that big of a deal but I'm noticing that I did. And so we'll just kind of retrace our steps quickly. But again, you see this little plus thing right next to the LFO, um, which is on this side here, as you can see, we need to hit that plus button and then just move the pitch back to where it's supposed to be. So let me do that real quick. Pitch, go pitch, and then I think we're good. LFO two, let's go ahead and set this one. Might as well, I guess we didn't do that beforehand. So it's good, that's making me clean up my mistakes. I'm gonna turn this one up. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go presets. I'm gonna go user, I'm gonna go save, and then I'm going to hit return. It's gonna override it. So now hopefully that will have that modulation set up with the key already in there. Now keep in mind, like if you don't have a MIDI CV in or something, um, or you don't have this racked within an instrument rack, then it's not gonna know where to find this. But even still, you know, as you get better and you're more aware, it shouldn't be too difficult to find. So within that, the only thing that we need to do now is we need to figure out a way to kind of make it a little bit more exciting. <laughs> So one thing that we could do is we could add a flanger to the whole thing, I suppose. And now that we're within this yellow rack here, anything that we put inside of this will kind of uh, do its thing. So if we go flanger, let's see what happens if we apply that to the entire sound. Uh, I believe that there's a low cut here. Yeah, there's a high pass of 100. So sometimes by doing that, it can do some cool stuff. But maybe if we high pass this at like, I don't know, say 120. Okay, 135, I'll, I'll deal. Then maybe that will give us a little bit of extra interest on here. There you have it. Uh, you can definitely always go further with this if you want to. I don't really find that it's all that necessary, um, especially because we're just kind of showing a concept here. But I mean, this thing is just like faceplant in the sense that it has relatively infinite effects and whatnot. So once you're ready, you know, you can start to fold all of these or hide in compact view and then fold the instrument in itself. And then you've got this nice little clean instrument here that you want to, you know, that you want to do. Now, what's really sick about this that I think is like 
one of these almost makes it kind of max for live esque is that if you open all of these kind of like so and you move all the way over to the right then what this is going to do is essentially create an instrument for you to where all of the things here are kind of ready to go and so i've basically just made this cool little preset of this instrument to where this is all available now one thing that i need to do because we're hiding it is i need to go back to this guy and turn off hiding compact view but now that this is turned on look at this I pretty much just made a uh, one oscillator instance of serum where you also can't do FM but still I've made a wavetable synth that's got some LFOs built into it it's got some direction already that you can you know tell it where to go um, you can set some macros if you want to overall I don't really find that that's necessary because these are all knobs anyways but I mean, yeah, how sick is this? I just did all this on my phone. And it wouldn't be a proper neurobase if we weren't to do something like WOTT, which is an OTT that's built in. Uh, this is basically what it sounds like. The only thing that I don't like about this is that the only way to kind of move the bands away from each other is by messing with the squash. I would like to do this on a per band thing, but I left a review on the Apple Store saying that they didn't understand my question, unfortunately, but hopefully <laughs> if they see this, then there's that. But yeah, so with this, this has got both upwards and downwards compression. So I find that we could probably just find something like, I don't know, maybe Reese booster or something. And we're gonna turn down the makeup gain, turn the limiter on. This gets really loud. So you have to kind of start. Uh, Woot is not free. I'm just kind of showing you some bonus stuff. So keep that in mind. It's like $4 or so, but even still it's worth it to me. There's a, it's a really cool upwards and downwards compressor. I mean, yeah, we can kind of back off of this just a bit and not use 100%, but, you know, and this is just one of those characters of sound that you may not even like, but I just wanted to show you because it's kind of cool. Uh, but let's go ahead and turn this up a bit. How cool is that? And if for whatever reason your stuff isn't moving fast enough or whatever, then you can always adjust the rate of your LFOs. So we can kind of set these to be a little bit faster here. Uh, Cause I like my stuff to morph and be like super duper active, but we can change the speed here. Sorry, that was an accident, but I can change the speed a little bit higher than on the high frequency. I can adjust this to be a little bit quicker as well. Maybe like so and see if we can get this morphing to kind of do a little bit better. I accidentally hit select output, just need to back out of that. And let's see if this will morph a little bit faster. Okay, that porridge is too hot, this porridge is too cold. Let's find just right. Oh, I hit 22, that's a lot, but maybe something around here. Let me adjust the cutoff on the analog filter to go all the way down. And I think that we're pretty much done. Now we're just kind of tweaking the sound to make it sound exactly how we want it. But if you're doing this, keep in mind that like you're most likely not going to recreate an exact sound like this. This is just a guide to show you a path, right? To show you a way that you can get some cool sounds to come out of this. <laughs> And it's not really necessarily meant to be like, oh, this is a follow along. And unfortunately, I don't even think I can give you the patch even if I wanted to, but it's possible and it's not that difficult to do. It only took, what, 34 minutes? I think it takes me longer to design a Neurobase and an MPC Live than it does on the phone. And that's if I'm teaching it. You know, if I'm just doing this by hand, you know, on my own, it takes about the same amount of time, like 15 to 20 minutes. And it's not really that bad. 
So get yourself some wavetables. You can get some off my website if you want to, or you can just import your favorites from Serum or any other pack that you have. Um, what you do is you just copy your wavetables into this guy, this folder. So you go to uh, browse, and then you just drag your wavetable folder into, um, let me go here, and then just go to on my phone. And you'll see that I've got wavetables here, and then I've got my whole folder. So you can literally drag all of these onto your folder on your phone, and then you just tell your browser where to go on this. So you go to this little import button right here, uh, rather here. That's a single wavetable, but if you go to batch import, then this will be able to find all of your wavetables and stuff that you want to use. So yeah, I mean, it's just like a computer, right? It's super freaking crazy. So anyways, that is how you make a Neurobase on Drambo with just first party effects. Literally a $30 synth that you're able to do some stuff that was not possible, barely possible, or like a major hassle, a major pain, uh, even just what, five, six years ago. So I'm just blown away. But yeah, if you all like the video, then you know, do me a favor and like it and uh, leave me a comment letting me know what you all think and whether or not you want me to cover more Drambo stuff. But um, yeah, the convenience factor behind making sounds on my phone just means that I'm like re-inspired to just make sounds all the time, especially that I can just sit down with my partner while she plays like Words with Friends or something, right? Uh, she's on her phone and then I'm on my phone making sound design. We're just hanging out together. It really is a good time. This literally is like the couch the couch synth right that we always dreamed of so anyways i'm rambling uh drambo if you or peep street if you watch this video i have some suggestions that i would love to add to this app but i mean it's phenomenal already so with that being said thank you all so much i will see you all in the next video